What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to create interactive visualizations of real estate data using a map in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, now before we get started with the actual tutorial, I would like to show you what we're going to end up with here as a motivational preview up front. This is the final result. You can see it's an interactive map. I can move around here. Uh, I can zoom out to see the entire world and I can also zoom into these data points here. Now you can see that all the data points in this case right now are in California. This is because I'm right now visualizing the California housing data set. Of course, if you have a European data set or an Asian data set or something like that, you're going to see the data points in the respective places. Uh, all you need for this is you need some data that contains coordinates and some additional information to determine the color and the size of the individual data points. Uh, so here, for example, I have uh, the individual data points colored based on the price and the size of the data points is determined by the average number of rooms uh, in the area. So since this is the California housing data set, the individual data points are not actually individual houses. They're actually uh, areas with median income and uh, median or average number of rooms and median house price and so on. But of course, you can use any data set containing individual houses, individual apartments, areas, whatever you want. Actually, it doesn't even have to be real estate data. You can uh, visualize any geographical data set uh, with the knowledge that you're going to learn about in this video today. So this is what we're going to build today an interactive visualization, we can also click on the individual data points to get some more information about them. And yeah, now we're going to need a couple of external Python packages for this video today. So we're going to open up the command line, and we're going to install the following packages using pip so either pip or pip three, install, and we're going to need pandas because we're working with data frames, we're going to need matplotlib for parts of the visualization. Uh, we're going to need scikit-learn, but only if you also want to use the California housing data set. If you want to use your own data set, just load it with pandas, read CSV if it's a CSV file, uh, read Excel if it's an Excel file, read JSON if it's a JSON file, and so on. The important thing about your data set is it has to contain coordinates, it has to contain latitude and longitude. So um, the location data, because you need, of course, to place the individual data points on the map. So you need to know where to place them. And this is specified as latitude and longitude. So you need to have the coordinates, everything else in your data set can be different. And you can use different features for the color for the size and so on. But you need to have the coordinates. Uh, and the fourth package is called folium. This is what we're going to use for the actual map visualization. So this is the package that is going to do all the uh, geographical stuff for us. Uh, all right, now once you have these packages installed, we're going to import pandas spd, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot splt, we're going to import matplotlib.colors as m colors. We're going to say from scikit learn, I want to import from the data sets, the fetch California housing function to download the California housing data set. Um, and I also want to import obviously folium and from folium, I also want to import plugins, uh, which is going to allow us to have a mini map. All right, so these are the imports. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get the data and we're going to decide on how we want to visualize the individual data points. Now for this video, I'm going to visualize the price as the color and the size as the size of the bubble. Now size in this case means average number of rooms because we don't have really a size feature in the uh, California housing data set. But if you have a data set containing individual houses, you might have something like uh, the area of the house, something like uh, square meters or square foot or something like that, and the price of the individual house, I'm going to use here the median house value of the area, and the average number of rooms for the size. So we're going to say here data equals fetch California housing, and we're going to pass as frame equals true to get it as a data frame. And then we're going to also create a map instance. So we're going to say m equals folium dot map. And what we want to do is we want to center the map around the data points that we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the coordinates of the data set, and we're going to calculate the mean coordinates. So the latitude and longitude mean values are going to be the center of our map. So for this, we're going to say location equals uh, data latitude dot mean and data longitude dot mean. And I also want to set a zoom factor of six in the beginning. 
So this is our map now. Now, in order to visualize our uh, price or our room numbers as color and size, we need to normalize them to make this easier. So we want to have the price values going from zero to one in order to be able to choose a color a value from zero to one, zero being uh, green for a very cheap house and or cheap area, and one being red for a very expensive area. And in between we have some yellow and for the size, we also want to have a certain range. And it's easier to work with values between zero and one instead of just using the raw values that we have. So in order to be able to normalize the values, we need to define or we need to get the minimum and maximum values. So I'm going to say here price min price max is going to be equal to data. And the feature is called met house bell. So median house value. Um, and I want to get the minimum and I want to get the maximum. So data met house val and then max. Uh, and the same thing for the room. So I'm going to say here size min and size max is going to be equal to data uh, average rooms dot min data average rooms dot max. And uh, these are the values that we're going to use for the normalization. Now, in order to visualize the individual data points, we're going to iterate over our data frame. So I'm going to say here for index that we don't need. So I'm going to use a placeholder and row in DF or actually data dot iteros. Uh, we're going to do the following. We're going to calculate the normalized price and we're going to turn it into a color. So the normalized price is equal to taking the price. So taking the row data, uh, median house value of the current data point, um, and subtracting from it the minimum price and dividing by the maximum price minus the minimum price. So by the price range. And to turn this now into a color, we're going to say color equals PLT. So we're going to use matplotlib uh, PLT uh, CM, which I think stands for color map. And we're going to choose the red, yellow, green color map. And we're going to pass you one minus normalized price, uh, one minus to invert it because we want it to go from green to red, green indicating small values, red indicating large values. And because of that, uh, we invert it because it goes from red to green, we want it to go from green to red. So this is how we determine the color of the bubble or of the data point. Then we're going to say normalized rooms is equal to the same thing for the rooms. So row average rooms minus size minimum divided by the size range. So size maximum size minimum. And um, that is our normalized room number here. Now, what we also want to have is we want to have a pop up with some information. So I'm going to say pop up uh, info is going to be an F string, I'm going to make this a multi line string. And this string will contain just uh, some information about about the area or in your case, if you have your own data set about the house. So median house value is going to be obviously the row met house val feature. Um, up to two decimal places, then I want to use a line break. And I'm going to say the average rooms is going to be row average rooms. I also want to use a line break here. Then we're going to say population of the area is going to be row population, feel free to add whatever you want here whatever your data set has or whatever you want to use from the data set. Uh, we're going to go with population line break as well. And then we want to go finally with the median income of the area. Now we don't need features like ocean proximity because we can see that visually. So we don't need to really put them here in the pop up info. Uh, so the median in income is going to be in dollars and it's called met Inc. And we want it up to two decimal places. And that's it. So this is our pop up info string. And now what we want to do is we want to create the actual circle. So we're going to say folium dot circle marker. And here now we're going to pass the following 
information. The location is going to be a list containing the latitude and longitude. So the coordinates of the individual data point, um, the radius of the data point is going to be a basis of five. So it's going to be five, uh, at least plus 20 times the normalized rooms. So depending on the number of rooms, we're going to have a multiplier of 20. The minimum size is going to be five if this is uh, zero, but I don't think that any area can have zero rooms. So it's going to be more than five usually. Um, and then we're going to go and say color is equal to m colors dot two hex. So we're going to take the color value that we get here. This is going to be a, a tuple of four values. I think we have RGB and then the opacity. So what we want to do is we want to convert RGB to hex. So we want to exclude the opacity because we just uh, want to have the RGB values and we want to turn them into a hex uh, color code. So we're going to say color and we only want to take the first three values. So R, G and B, uh, red, green, blue. We also want to set fill to true. We want to say the fill color is going to be the same as the other one. So it's going to be two hex color three and the opacity now for filling. So the fill underscore opacity will be 0 0.7, 70% here. And now the pop up will be equal to folium dot pop up containing the pop up information and having a maximum width of 300. This is our circle marker. And now all we need to do is we need to add it to our map. So just add a dot, uh, add to M and then we have our circle marker on the map. And we do this for all the data points. And the last thing that we need to do is in the end, we want to enable the minimap. So we need to say plugins dot uh, minimap dot add to M. So we add a minimap to our map. And finally, M dot safe. Uh, let's call this real estate dot HTML. And that is our oh, actually we need to use the constructor here. So this is actually a call. Uh, and that is now our visualization code. So we just load the data, we create a map, we normalize the price and the number of rooms, we determine the color based on that we add a pop up string, we create a marker for every single data point with a location with the rooms, uh, or with the size based on the rooms with a color based on the price. Uh, and then we add a mini map, we export everything as an HTML file. So now I can just run this, it's going to take actually what's the problem here latitude. Uh, did I misspell it? Actually not. So where is this actually? It's here data. Oh, sorry, I made one mistake. We get this as a frame, but to actually get the data frame, we need to say dot frame. So we get the data set and we want to get the data frame of the data set. So I'm going to run this again. Now it should work. And it's going to take some time, it's going to export an HTML file, which we can then open up in the browser as an interactive uh, visualization. Now I'm already going to open this in files here. And you can see that the file is being created already. Uh, now it's done. And I'm going to open this in Chrome because in Firefox, it's quite laggy, especially when I'm recording. And there you go, we have our visualization, you can see the minimap or actually you cannot see the minimap because my camera is blocking it. There you go, you can see the minimap here. Um, I can move around, I can zoom out a lot, as you saw in the preview already, I can see the entire world, I can also zoom in quite a bit. So I can actually go quite uh, deep into these data points, I can go to the streets and individual houses and so on. Um, and uh, also I can click on the data points to get the pop up information. So yeah, this is how you can easily create interactive visualizations of real estate data or any geographical data. If you have any data containing coordinates, and additional information for the styling, you can make a visualization like this using folium using Python. And yeah, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and bye.